much depth of field as you could human, not on automatic, because it's not going to, it's going to have to be aperture priority, and it's going to have to be set as deep as you can. <coughs> a lot of you cameras go to f8, that's not going to get it. For that one, you wouldn't be able to do it. This is f32. Okay, mine, mine goes f so if you, but you do the best that you can. Right? When you're out in the field, do you kind of experiment, like, especially with, with things? Well, yeah, I've got, I mean, we got hundreds and hundreds of pictures of these And trillions. so you, you make some adaptations and different, changes? Different views, different, different perspectives, angles. everything is different. different yeah, I'll just take one picture and then... What's right. a short vacation? What's a <laughs> 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 you, you, Do you moderate your settings? Absolutely. So, okay. Every time, yeah. So then... Then you would change. Moderate is another word for control. Control. You control yeah. your settings, absolutely. All right. And, and the conditions dictate what you can and cannot do. We were here at noon, bright sun, windy. There's no photo. There were a lot of people taking photos, but there was no photo there. Okay? All right. If the background is part of the photo, you know, there's no way to eliminate this, so you just stick it in it. Okay? Here, I didn't want the background in it, so you take it out. Okay? Here, you maximum depth of field. Roses really don't blow in the wind because they're in this big mat. You know, they just kind of sit there. So you've got control over how much depth of field. These, you have to do the opposite because they're blowing around, you know, in sand prairie and sugar speed, which is, which is good, which means you have to get parallel. Use a small, uh, fast shutter speed and a small aperture to. Pull it out, okay? So I, I watch people, when they go out in the field, they look, they're just bewildered. Okay? It is bewildering, but you have to, that's why we're trying to get you to focus your attention on these things, and these are the things that we have to do to get what you need to do. Like your, your picture of the chippings, was it chipping sparrow? Yeah. You just pulled it out. I mean, to me it looked like it was, you took a diorama in a museum, but you, you did that optically. I hope you did it optically. <laughs> you got your husband sitting there holding it. No, it doesn't work. I was pretty far away. I'm very narrow. Yep. Okay. What does photographing plant as part of the scenery look like? There. Okay. This is the same photo as the trillions. Because you got the mountain range back here, you got wide angle, low angle, calm. Okay. Here's another one. Remember when Yellowstone burned and everybody said, oh, Yellowstone is gone forever. Yeah. This is what it looked like next the, the year after. It's on top of a mountain <laughs> in British Columbia. These are all the same concept as part of the, where do they grow? Okay. Where do they grow? The number one request I get for photos in Illinois, I need a big scenic panorama of a prairie in Illinois. It's tough, isn't it? <laughs> There aren't any. There aren't any to do, you know? All right. So you have to, all right, intimate landscape or portrait. There's a portrait. It's the same time, same place, same everything. I didn't move the camera from the previous one with the mountains, but I changed the lens or the focal length. Okay? Here are the mountains. See, I mean, so you can see the components of the same photo. It's still there. You just change settings. Here's one of those Elliott Porter intimate landscapes. This says boreal forest. If you know anything about uh, what are those? What's the plant? Bunchberry. Bunchberry. They grow in boreal forest. And these are our, our Canadian shield granite boulders, right? Okay. Intimate landscapes. Intimate little pieces of the environment. This is wild uh, bleeding heart in the Smoky Mountains. They can only about wild bleeding heart. That's where it lives, in the Appalachian Mountains. You don't have to do the whole thing. Piece of the plant, you know. Do whatever you want, okay? But when you start doing this, then what becomes critical? Your manipulation of depth of field. Because you gotta know what, what am I focused on? Because as you get closer to the subjects, <coughs> your depth of field declines. Here's a, a prairie showing only two plants, you know, 
composition, line, <coughs> no depth of field, parallel, and it's the same thing over and over and over and over again. You just, that'd be a good activity. Just have a whole bunch of things in the thing. You pick four out and you have to go fly those to a photo. I mean, that'd be a good activity. Kind of tough. Here's another one on the prairie. The important thing here is being parallel. Parallel. Okay. Ways to tree scene. Okay, here's, we were in the Rocky Mountains. Here's four scenes. I walked up, oh, a pretty flower clip, you know, typical eye level. And I thought about it, I'm like, well, maybe I'll, you know, do something different. So I took four images of the same thing. What's different? It's only one thing different. Perspective. Perspective. Okay? This is too lazy to bend over. <laughs> <clears throat> this one is, well, I'll get down a little bit, you know. This one, well, I'm just going to look at it straight down. And this one is getting your knees, your feet wet, your butt wet. Okay. Very, very, these, these two are similar. These two are very, very different. Okay. Simply by changing where you, I didn't change the lens. It's the same lens. Perspective is important. All right. So when photographing plants, there are no right or wrong approaches, only opportunities that you must recognize and be able to interpret, okay? So, the other thing is, when you see it, take it. It'll never be the same, well, I guarantee you, it will never, never be the same. You come back 20 minutes later, it's not the same. Something has changed, the sun moves, the wind blows, plants and s, you know. So, when you get an opportunity to, to do something, do it. This is one of Sue's photos, and she sat there for 25 minutes waiting for the sun to go in so she could take this. By the time she was done, there was a family of short-tailed weasels. Short weasels playing around her feet. <laughs> Did you get a picture of those? No. <laughs> but she became part of the landscape. Okay? Now, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't be a lazy. Oh, it's hot. Yeah. Yesterday it was miserable. I guarantee you, we were out all day yesterday. It was miserable outside, and yet I took 300 photos. She took you know, tons of photos. I mean, it, what, once you get to concentrate on doing something, what the environment around you becomes less important. Okay, can you turn on the lights for a second? I'm going to show you some examples and then let's see. Take a break. What is getting, what is photographing plants look like? Uh, okay, here's a photo of trilliums, very thick, very busy. Okay. And yet, I'm still, what am I? Parallel. And, and, and because they're so thick, what do you do? <coughs> Depth of field. And it's not blowing. <coughs> Here's one. What's the main flood root? What's the main component? Two components. One, parallel, and two, perspective. Right? It doesn't change. Harold, you ever tried to photograph Dutchman's bridges? They're all over the place, right? And yet, I guarantee you, every clump has a narrowest plane, and every clump will stop eventually. Oh, here's an interesting one. One of the most difficult plants to, to photograph are flowering trees. So here's spice bush. So you think, well, I'm going to need massive amounts of depth of field. No. Can we sit that over here? Yeah, I'll, I'll put them all up here. Okay. So this is minimal depth of field, but, a, but the correct plane of focus. Okay? And here, the opposite. You just you put everything in. Okay, I'll stick those up back here. Yeah. And these are just, these are all, anything else? Yeah, this 
this one, it's the same thing. Red, or red iris out in the swamp. So you treat it like a bird. Right? It is a bird. It's out there. It's just not flying around. Okay. Break time. I'll put these up. Take uh, 10 15.